Okay guys, um, I thought I'd bring you along on a 3k running time trial. I really love this test, especially for using it on motorcycle races. Um, I've got a long term athlete, uh, Wayne Maxwell his name is, he's a professional mo superbike motorcycle racer. And I really like this test as a, as a good predictor of their off-bike fitness. Um, it fits really nicely in the NASCAR pr protocols. Um, and with us, the, my main concern is uh, that, that his off-bike fitness isn't a limiting factor for him. Um, superbike races or motorcycle races present a really challenging prospect to condition them and, and to test them because there's such a, a big equipment part of the race. Um, the bike accounts for a lot. And then, of course, there's such a skill, skill component as well. So why I use this test, uh, it's race format can be anything from 10 minutes, so 10, 10 minutes flat out, to recently we've been conditioning him to be ready for a 24 hour race in France. So we use this test, um, we've used this in the past, so the results are gonna be relative to him. We know where he needs to be, um, and, and we know that round about 10 and a half minutes means he's, he's on point for the sprint races. I would fully expect him to go slower today, Based on the endurance work we've been doing, we've been doing a lot of long, slow distance work to prep him for this 24 hour race and have gone away from the traditional sprint training. So when I use this test, when we look at this test, I'll compare it against some true aerobic tests and uh, uh, to see where we're tracking, see how we need to structure our training. If we've got a really good aerobic test versus a slow uh, 3K time trial, um, then I can know that we need to ta tailor our training more towards anaerobic type work. The test is perfect as far as uh, a short race simulation. These guys will, will race from gate drop, he'll average around about 184 beats a minute um, and he's, he'll see maxes during the race of 195-ish. So we run a really, really high heart rate and these heart rates we, we, uh, they can sustain for up to sort of 20 minutes. In the longer races we'll see a slightly lower heart rate. To run this test, in the curator's wisdom, he's actually hung out all the uh, all the gates so it's blocked off lanes two and three but I've run around with the trundle wheel just to make sure uh, lap distance we're going to have to run the test from lane three which is 415.3 meters around okay uh, so that means we're running seven laps plus 93 meters we'll finish him at the start line and we'll start him 93 meters exactly that direction I'm going to run two stopwatches to make sure that this doesn't uh, that the results aren't compromised to make sure we're, we've got both the same. On top of that, Wayne's gonna run his own stopwatch with, which gives me a little bit of extra data as far as his, uh, his average speed, his average heart rates, and I can plot this against previous 3K as he's done. Why I like this test is we, su we suffer from a very rare case. It's, it's a, an acute compartment syndrome. Um, it only seems to be motorcycle racers and rowers that get an, an acute compartment syndrome in their forearms. Our lactate clearance plays a huge role in how, how quickly this, this compartment syndrome comes on. It's called arm pump in motorcycle circles, but this is a great test. So if Wayne is running well um, and his times are good, his anaerobic, time, his anaerobic tolerance is good and his lactate clearance is gonna be good, which means our clearance from, of lactate in the arms is gonna be much better. So what we'll do is we're gonna run through a general low intensity aerobic warm up, he'll do two laps. We're then gonna do some mobility. Wayne's got some lower back issues, so I want him to do some glute activation work before all his running. So he's gonna do some glute activation work. Then we're gonna go into some slightly higher intensity running and then send him straight into the 3K without too long. So like I say, it's gonna be seven laps plus 93 meters. We'll run a couple of stopwatches and we'll see where he ends up. Let's rip into it. Um, first off, Wayne's gonna head off for two Ks, just an easy jog before we come back and do some mobility work. We've got 93 metres here. So we're just doing some bridging, some glute activation work, um, something that we've been working on with a bit of rehab. So I want him to do this before all he's running. Um, so we're going to do the single leg bridge and probably just some hip extensions just to activate these muscles before he, fire, before he runs out. This is some 
just some more advanced warm-up stuff. We're trying to use things that are gonna require some running patterns. So now a backwards lunge, so a reverse lunge, the whole way back to your starting point. So trying to warm up the muscles that he's going to use when he's running. Now we're gonna do some accelerations just to pick the intensity up. I wanna to, to have a heart rate around about 150 before you start. Okay, so from here, I just want you to have a nice leisurely jog out to this point yeah. and accelerate sort of 50% through to that other cone. Then we'll do the same on the way back. So a nice leisurely jog to there and then just rolling acceleration through to this cone. 50%, not too fast yet. Head down and get him started. He's 415, um, 415.3 to be exact. So that is, once you get to that yellow cone, 93 metres away, we've got seven laps. I'll count you down um, and let you know how you're tracking. Um, remember with this, everyone can go out a bit hard. So if you go out too hard, you'll blow up and then it buggers your time way too much. So what I'd prefer you to see you do is set a nice good pace um, and then really come home in the last lap or two. Start yours. Ready, set, go. go. Good job, mate. Six to go, six to go. It's good. Five to go. Three down, four to go, four to go. Good, mate. Two to go, two to go. I'm gonna whip it up now. Got nothing. Got nothing. Yeah, good, good, real good. Push through, it's good. Good, good, good. So that was 11.22 then. Um, that's not unexpected, it's obviously slower than, than what he's run, um, but that's not unexpected with all the long, slow distance cycling, running work we've been doing. Um, and I mean, it's again, it's off a big training week. So I don't know at this stage whether it's a significant change backwards. Um, to be honest, I'll probably have to plug it into that Will, uh, Will Hopkins post crossover, post only crossover spreadsheet to be able to tell and just see how we're tracking. So, but this will give me a really good way to be able to structure his program. He gets straight off the plane back from France. We've got two weeks to turn him around and then we're back into 10 minute sprint races. So um, that's what we'll definitely take these results from this time trial. Probably do one after in between now and the next race, just to see how he is tracking and then make a, a decision on his programming for how we best structure it to suit him for the, to go back to sprint formats.